Hello, and welcome to Strangers Shopping Strangers. This is the podcast number 17. Thank you so much for joining. A big welcome back to anyone who's returning. Anna, thanks for stopping in to anybody who's new to this podcast. So thank you. Well, I have had so much fun meeting all the strangers in the last uh, 14 podcasts since uh, podcast number two with my good friend, Wendy. And this week's is a return to the nest. This is not a stranger, but um, a friend, not even a friend, but my first friend, first best friend, deadhead friend, and that is my big sister, Michelle. We had so much fun making this podcast, and uh, welcome to the family, everyone. So I hope you guys enjoyed listening to us as much as we enjoyed making it. Uh, We start off when Michelle was a senior in high school and her first show experiences. We go on to when I jumped on the bus with her and all the great times we had going to uh, Shoreline and Cal Expo. We go to a New Year's Eve show and uh, then on to a New Year's show with Further that she enjoyed with her husband. And we wind up in Boston at Fenway, where we got to enjoy seeing the Dead & Company this past summer and just had an amazing weekend. And after our podcast, I have a special second guest this week, and it's the Chicken Shack guy. He was on in the summer, and summertime come and gone, my oh my, and he's back because we got an election coming up, and he's been in touch with Uncle Sam. And has a few things he wants to uh, weigh in on. So please stay tuned for Chicken Shack at the end of the podcast. And as always, thank you so much for tuning in and listening. And we'll catch you in a couple weeks. Well, Michelle, welcome to Strangers Shopping Strangers Podcast. Well, thank you. I'm excited to be a guest. Oh, this is very exciting. This is uh, the first non-stranger that I've had since the first podcast, and it couldn't be anybody more special and important and anyone I love in the whole wide world. So this is uh, my, my, my heart is smiling right now and <laughs> getting to talk to you about the dead and, and chat. So this is super fun. Well, thank you. No, I've really enjoyed listening to all of them, so I'm excited to be a guest on the other on the other side, on the speaking end. Well, welcome to the Bernard Girls Dialogue podcast, listeners. So they are in for a treat today. So, uh, well, let's start. We uh, let's kind of the typically the podcast. We kind of start at the beginning. I mean, I know the beginning, but I want to share. You know, you sharing the beginning, and uh, and we're gonna play the first show and. Uh, so, you know, tell me when the grateful that you, you brought it to our family. So tell me a little how, uh, how, how you brought the music in. So I'm thinking back, my first experiences were, of course, with Auntie Anne. Um, I want to say the first album that really spoke to me was American Beauty. I remember her playing that and just loving it. And then my, a good friend of mine in high school, Emily, her brother was really into the dad. And so she had tons of tapes of different concerts and things. So she would get copies of tapes and we would listen to them. And, uh, and I just, I always enjoyed the music, but it really like didn't fully come together for me until seeing them live. I mean, that was, uh, amazing. Uh, and my first, uh, first show was May, 87. So that was my senior year in high school um, at Laguna Seca. We uh, headed over to Monterey and, uh, you know, it was my first experience seeing them live and it was just amazing. Well, and you were, we were talking about it earlier. It was a camping weekend, but but this was just a one and done. The Laguna Seca that, that we were talking about last week, which really was my ultimate inspiration for getting you on the podcast was me admitting last week that I had um, hijacked your memories and turned them yeah. into mine. But yeah. this isn't that Laguna Seca. This is the first no. one. So this is yeah, senior year. It was just a day. They played Saturday and Sunday, and there was camping going on, but it was it was a day trip for us. We headed over Saturday, and, and honestly, it was so much fun. I wish that we were staying, but Sunday was Mother's Day, and, you know, the plan was to come home, but, uh, it, you know, I was able to, to rewrite it. I, I would have loved to stay. It was definitely, a, definitely, you know, a great place to see a show, and I would have loved to have stayed for the second one, but... Um, but one was one was a taste. It was it was awesome. 
It was just a taste to get the ball rolling. And Laguna Seca, I mean, it's just so cool down there. I mean, that's been a place that's been close to you and your family. And I mean, how, I mean, it's, it's cool that that's where it started because, I mean, just in general, for anyone who, you know, in Northern California has been out there, I mean, just the camping and the hiking and we've gone camping out there. I mean, it's a, it's a neat place to have that, um, to have that memory, you know? Yeah. And it, I mean, it was a little track, like a little over an hour, but not that far. Like you felt like it wasn't right in your backyard, but it, it definitely wasn't that far for a day trip. So, um, yeah, it was, it was beautiful. And, um, and just the whole, the whole scene, just seeing all the, the deadheads. And, and I had heard, you know, about the shows and had friends that had gone to shows when I was, uh, so I guess that it was my senior year in high school, but it was uh, just amazing seeing it in person and being a part of it. So, well, so this is 1987. We looked at the set list and uh, and kind of picked through the set list to figure out which song we that, that you know you wanted to pick. Obviously, I'm well, me being a little bossy, I picked one and then we picked a different one. But um, so, <laughs> so let's uh, so we we changed that one up a little bit. But uh, so tell me about what what we chose and uh, and and what we're going into. So I went with Touch of Grey because that song was just such, a, you know, of the moment of 87. Like that was, you know, it was a new song then. And as much as I loved hearing the old songs, it was, it was the song that was also being played on the radio. And so it was just, it was, you know, current for that time. And it was awesome seeing it in concert. Um, at the time, I didn't really know the difference between the older songs and the newer songs because I was just experiencing and listening to it all. To, you know, all at the same time, but I think this was a song that I just, you know, when I heard it, had heard it before, and just was super excited to see it live. Well, I think playing um, something from In the Dark and playing Touch of Grain in 87 is the perfect apropos song for that time, and you know what, and what you're saying, I mean, it's like it it didn't get you in, you, you were already in, and I know that people out there are kind of funny about when Touch of Grey came out and, and they got their top, you know, hits going but I mean I don't know I'm all for anything that that brings people in and makes people listen and, and gets people excited about my community so I mean I'm thrilled that they had Hell in a Bucket and Touch of Grey and you know that the whole um, In the Dark album had the success because it, it, it got people out there and listening and um, and I think that that's always a good thing you know absolutely no and I, I would be places and it would come on and you know, my friends, when I went on to college, were like, oh, look, Michelle, it's one of your songs. It's being played on the radio. And, and granted, you know, a few years later, I realized, you know, that, yes, that wasn't, it wasn't just, you know, in the dark, that there were lots of songs that were, you know, quote, unquote, my songs, the songs that I enjoyed listening to. But those were the ones that I, that, you know, friends of mine heard and, and recognized as the Grateful Dead. So I feel like it definitely... I just got it out there where, where, you know, a lot of people, you know, heard it, heard it on the radio and knew of the song. So that was, um, yeah, so it was, it was awesome seeing that song, seeing it played. That's very cool. Well, I'm all for renaissances and, and we'll, we'll, we'll talk later on about current state of affairs that I've talked about with other podcasts, but, um, you know, we're in a bit of a, a renaissance again now. So any, any renaissance time that, that, that brings people in and gathers new listeners, I think, is um, is always good. Well, let's, let's go into some music. So I'm going to play from your first concert from Laguna Seca, and this is on Saturday, May the 9th. Not Sunday Mother's Day, Mom. She, we were back. We all went yeah. out to lunch with Nana. Um, <laughs> we're going to do Touch of Grey from Laguna Seca, Saturday the 9th uh, from 1987. So you are a senior in high school with Emily out there in Laguna Seca. And I was a sulky eighth grader wishing that I could be <laughs> along. <laughs> but I wasn't. Yeah. So everybody enjoy, and we will be right back. Awesome. Oh, 
we have just enjoyed listening to Tetra Gray from Laguna Seca, and uh, that was the beginning of the journey. So, I mean, so many fun stories. I mean, I, I jumped on the bus on your coattails after that, right? And yes. <laughs> so much fun, fun adventures. I mean, 87, 88, I mean, just so many great places, Shoreline. Yeah. and Absolutely. Lots of Shoreline shows, lots of fun summer camping shows. They played it at Calaveras. That was a really fun, you know, three-day camping show. Back to Laguna Seca for camping shows. Uh, Oakland Col- Coliseum, Shoreline, lots of good shows, um, lots of lots of two three day shows that you could drive to. Just a really fun time when I really was really enjoying the scene. I know you. Were, I mean, thinking about like college days. I mean, the timing. I mean, the Bay Area and seeing the Grateful Dead in the late eighties in college. I mean, really. I mean, just it's just a kind of a. An awesome thing to be into is just the availability of it all, you know. I mean, we've uh, I've talked to other people about, you know, the East Coast and the West Coast and, you know, how many miles they would have to go to see three or four shows. And and I was like, we, you know, yeah, we would catch 20 in a year without going yeah. more than 90 miles. It's amazing. Absolutely. You know, bang for your buck, driving out to different areas. And like I said, there'd be two, three in a row that we were able to see you know, multiple shows in one weekend. And, I mean, the camping shows were just the best because you got there and parked your car, and that was it. I remember when I went to Calaveras, I got there, and when I got out of the car, my flip-flop broke, and I was barefoot for three days. Like, where else could you just be barefoot for three days? And who cares? It just was so much fun. And just running into other people that you had seen either at other shows or from other um, just different, you know, times, high school, college, just different uh different settings and just uh, just a really, really fun time. And all of the friends, I mean, the friends that I had in high school and the friends that you had in high school, I mean, we're, we're, we're still friends with them. I mean, we still yeah. consider, you know, Liz and Emily and Kat and, and Liz jumping aboard a little later and, Absolutely. I mean, LaFolker. I mean, it's, it's, it's uh, the capsule, I mean, the quality, the people that, you know, we share the experiences with. I mean, hello to all of those people who are listening. Yeah. Um, Yay. Hi. Hey. Such, <laughs> such fun times, such good memories. Um, and what's so funny is that, you know, my husband, we've been together almost, well, we've been together over 20 years, but married almost 20, over, we've been together over 20 years, but married for almost 20 years. And, uh, and we saw so many of the same shows. We didn't know each other, but um you know the uh we were bound to meet there were lots of you know our friends were there partying in separate groups but parallel partying so um so that's pretty cool too it's a, it's a cosmic connection out there well so in the vein of like summer and hanging out so the next the next concert you know we kind of went through and there were so many to, so many to choose from and I, you know, I, I kind of swayed the selection a little bit with, um, even though it's your podcast, I'm being a little, little bossy yeah. with the Cal Expo summer because, because that was the summer that we were living together. That was the big, that was the big college experience for me going to live in your apartment for three months. Yeah. Well, <laughs> I had two just months graduated coming home. and, and I, and you were able to come up, you had just graduated high school and I just graduated college and you came and spent the summer with me. And, uh, yeah, the Dead played at Cal Expo in Sacramento. We were living in Davis, and so it was just a, a short little drive away, and we went and had a, a great camping weekend. Did we drive at night? No, we camped, right? We no, didn't no, drive. we camped there. We stayed there, we, okay. yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's all a blur, but I think yeah. it was fun drive now as a as a grown-up looking back from Davis yeah. to Sacramento. It's a short jump unless you were, you know, um, having the Absolutely. time we were having. So, yeah, no, no. Yeah, the, right. the car stayed parked, you know, which definitely made for just a, a, you know, a better experience when you just were able to kind of wander back to your tent at the end of the night. So, yeah, so it's much so fun. Hot. Yeah, no, that was that was so fun. I uh, and then I was looking at Setless. I think after the Cal Expo that we're going to play, we hightailed it back to the Bay Area because they played the next week at Shoreline, and I, I remember going to that too. I think that that capped off sort of the end of the summer experience because when I was downloading concerts and looking at them, they played back to back from um, from in August, and then they popped down to Shoreline, and I think we yeah I think we we got it all in yeah. <laughs> one two yeah. three. And and I think that was the end of my Davis run. That's when I, I moved back to the back to the Bay Area. So awesome. Yeah. Well, I'm gonna play for all of our listeners that are listening to our our walk down memory lane. Um, 
from Cal Expo, and this is on August 17th, 1991. And Michelle, tell us, what, what song did we select from this? So we are going to play Estimated Profit, which is one of my all-time favorites. I just love Estimated Profit. And shout out to you, Izzy. I danced to Estimated so many times with you, and I just, um, the song will always make me think of you, and it's, it's absolutely one of my favorites, so. All right, well, California, here we come, the prophet on the burning yep. shores. Everybody enjoy a little estimate of profit, and then we will we will go down our journey a little bit further. Enjoy. <laughs>
Well, hey now, everyone. Hey. <laughs> Listening to Estimated Profit, and uh, gosh, I mean that's just that's just always such a fun song. I mean, being the native Californians that we oh, are, I feel I love it, love it. Claim that one because uh, as it was written just for us, it was yeah. uh, that's. It's just so much fun, and they played that at the last song, the last show we'll talk about. But yeah. uh, so now we're in night fun, and uh, we 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 couldn't pick a New Year's concert to to show. So we're gonna we're gonna talk about two, and then we'll we'll dub in some songs from both of them. So we're yeah. we're going off the uh, off the track here on Strangers Stopping Strangers. So everybody follow along. But um, New Year's Eve. So tell tell me what the, you know. Let's uh, let's talk a little bit about New Year's Eve ninety one into ninety two. So there's just there's nothing like a New Year's show, and I know you actually experienced your for your New Year's show before I did, and I was so envious when you came back with your you know fancy ticket stub and all your you know um, memories from the show, and uh, and then I was fortunate to get to go to a New Year's show. Um, 91 to 92. Uh, it was it was it was awesome just to experience it. Um, we uh, we got to the show and it was just you know packed. We didn't know to to line up ahead of time, right? We just you know uh-huh. got there, walked in, and everybody was uh, you know blankets all lined up and the floor space was taken. And we just wanted to sit down and chill and get ready before the show. And uh, our cousin came down. Remember, he walked down and saw us. I mean, just so random that he, you know, found us. And we weren't texting or communicating how to meet. No, I mean, that that is just a great thing about dead shows is you would just run into someone that you would just never expect to see, like a little angel. And they would just come in. And then and it was just this serendipity that just was always happening all over the place. And we knew he had been to shows that we had been to, but we had never seen each other. And here we are, like not sure where to go, not sure where to sit. And he came down and he's like, I got you. I've got, uh, you know, special pass seats. I don't, where were we sitting? We were like in a kind of roped off reserve. In the area. hall? Yeah. <laughs> oh, not in that before. <laughs> in the hall, peeking in on the standing ground. Yeah, no, I, I, I want to feel it was like, Oakland Coliseum, like roped off. I think it was the left side. I think we were yeah. on. I think we were on the we were on the fill side, like the left right. hand the side, kind of tucked underneath side. the car there. Yeah, and and close, like we were able to see everything really close. It was it was awesome. So we brought us to these special seats in a roped off zone, and you know we were able to sit down and just chill and relax and. So happy to have a place to sit and be able to see the show and um, just so awesome. Oh, he was just such a he was just uh, so sad. He just he just died. I mean, just thinking about him and uh, I mean, he was just such a such a big, friendly, handsome, you know, tall beacon of a man, right? His big old just yeah. just white oh, yeah. um, you know, with the curly hair and the big smile and uh, yeah, he was so cute and he, yeah. so, hey, Bobby, you know, little, hey. all right. To Bobby Cully or any of the Cullys or, or Ann or Karen or whoever's listening to this, just talking about cousin Bobby who came in and uh, swooped uh, the Bernard girls out and <laughs> plopped and, us in our little spot. In a little spot, and then he and then he, you know, took care of us. He brought us yeah. stuff through the show. We we were so paranoid we wouldn't get up, wouldn't dare leave our seats or go to the bathroom or get anything to eat because you know we were sure they'd never let us back into the roped off spot. So we we just enjoyed our seats and he brought us stuff. And right before New Year's, he brought us uh, two cans of Coors Light, and it was just we were. I mean, it, it was New Year's. It was a party. Yeah, was, we were like little little birds in the nest that Bobby <laughs> blocked us up and kept bringing us little bibbits. No, it was so fun. I I do, and that was the first year after Bill Graham died, and and we were just talking about it. It was the last year that the Grateful Dead played New Year's Eve together. I mean, that was and, um, you know, they played on, but they didn't do those the Oakland shows any longer. They did not do that, and they did. I and I had heard about so many shows, and so they did like a montage of different countdowns, a video montage beforehand. So I kind of felt like I was brought up to speed, even though I had missed them all. I got to see little snippets of them there, and 
Um, I know that the one you had been, had you been to one or two before? I went to the one before. Kat and I went to the one okay. before. We were and seniors so, in high school and went Bill swooping across. And uh, and there was like no the Bill. So they didn't, they didn't do the Bill. Oh, oh yeah. yeah, the balloons yeah. and the glitter and the confetti. and um, But but they did the balloons. And, yeah, I remember the, the balloons yeah. dropping and the glitter. And, yeah, and, the, and I just remember they had the very dark, the Bill, the Bill Graham. They did the montage of him. And they had, it was very... Um, you know, it was like kind of like almost gothic, you know, with the, you know, with really kind of paying homage because it was just a couple months after he died and Bill Graham yeah. was such a, you know, I mean, such he was. He was. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. So, well, I'm going to, so we're going to talk about more New Year's for you listeners. So I'm going to do a back to back song. So uh, Michelle's next special, when we went through all of the memories, there were two New Year's ones. So in the stories, I, we're going to jump forward 20 years, but for listeners, I'm going to play back to back Sugar Magnolia from '91 into '92, and then I want to talk a little bit about New Year's Eve, and then we will tell you that selection, and I'll remind you again before you pipe in the music. So, so that being like a cumulative experience, like the of all of those years, and then the next special memory was so jumping forward, up. yeah, like <laughs> jump forward. Tw- I mean, 20 years, and I definitely went to. You know, different shows, different renditions of them, whether it was uh, uh, seeing, you know, Phil Lesh and Friends or the other ones or Further Festival, um, you know, lots of shows. Typically New Year's Eve, I want to say it was mostly New Year's Eve that I, that, you know, we were able to catch. And, and really, if they were playing, there was nowhere I'd rather be on New Year's Eve. I mean, it's just such a, such a, a fun way to ring in the new year. And um, Chris and I got to see quite a few shows. And this one just, stands out the 2011 to 2012 so yeah it's jumping 20 years forward and wow. uh, it was just uh, it was such a great show you know, coming into 2012 the year of the dragon the, the beginning set list was just amazing and uh, they came out at new year's with the dragon and it was just uh, it was so much fun father time was there it was built was it bill walton that came down as father time came out as uh. father time Hey, Bill Walden, if you're listening. Oh, so fun. So fun. And then um, uh, it just it was just such a great show. So much fun. Uh, after New Year's, they went into playing in the band. And I guess at, at some point, I actually nodded off. I think I had a smile on my face as I nodded off. But they played a whole third set. Like, when does that happen? They played. No, uh, I, I, I mean, was looking it was, at it. It went on and on. I mean, not, it not went on since and on. the 70s. You know, I, not since I the 70s. I think it went on. I think it went on till like two in the morning. I mean, I I was I was in and out of dozing, but I enjoyed. I'm sure every minute of it. Such an awesome show. I love the story of like just imagining you being there, kind of like curled up in your chair, and Chris just beaming with a big smile on his face, like hanging out, smiling, like all is well in the world, you know, just yeah. like grooving and smiling, and got you tucked into your little seat there, and just kept on going, you know. <laughs> Such a good time. So much fun. I think I I, I remember hearing about it, and I was transported to the East Coast at that time. So I get to, again, like the early days, live vicariously. Well, I'm going to play one of your other favorites. So what did we, from that monstrous third three show, three set show. Three set show. But we went with uh, Shakedown Street, which was at the beginning, right, sometime in the first set. Cause we got to get a shakedown street on. We got to we got to hit all all the high all the high points on this on this podcast. So so listeners, I'm going to do a back to back, and I've I've gone staying with the format where I'm not going to do the full song because I'm trying to keep the podcast at a nice you know digestible hour or less time, and then I'm going to have a companion guide on the website with all of the songs unedited. So we're going to do Sugar Magnolia and kind of do the opening chords and go in for a little bit. And then I will do my best to fade it out and then come back in with some Shakedown Street from further. And it'll be fun to hear the difference between the Grateful Dead and the further and and the energy and and, and what's going on. So um, so happy New Year's, everyone. Woohoo! Yay. Yay.
that was a fabulous two New Year's, 20 years apart, right? 91 into 92, well, 19 years, and then, no, 20 years, 91 into yeah. 92, and, yeah, and 20, then, so 20 year yeah. span there for uh, for yeah. some of those boys playing in the band, and yeah. uh, we're, we're not going to hop as farther down the road now, because of the last topic, I kind of did a shout out when we talked about the show before, but... Um, absolutely wanted to uh go over is uh the dead and company this summer because that was just an all-star weekend man i mean so much the best. Fun. yeah so much fun so i was able to come out to boston and my friend emily who i saw my first show with was able to come and meet me there she came out from north carolina so having emily there and hanging out with you Stace, it was just it was just so fun we had the best time together it was just so great and, uh, it and, the, and it, yeah, it lived up. The, I anticipated it, anticipated it, and then the show was just amazing. It was so awesome. And, you know, one of the songs that I was thinking about that I really wanted to hear was The Music Never Stopped. And it was, was it the second or third song? It was early on on the first show. And uh, yeah. that's my that's my choice. But that's I don't know, anything, anything about the show you want to share? Like, I just... I mean, it was just so special. I had just started doing this podcast about six weeks before. So, I mean, obviously, I've ever, I've done a deep dive, you know. I mean, now as we go back through our history, I mean, Deadhead for, you know, almost 30 years. But, you know, the last four or five months have been, you know, really transformative with the community. So, I mean, I was just getting my engines revving. And then to be in Boston yeah. and be a transplant, I mean, and having you right. there and you're, having Emily there. And, I mean, it, and your and your place. And, and I had never been to Fenway Park, so it was just I was excited to see that and just just to see, just to experience my first East Coast show. I had never, I had never been on an airplane someplace to see the dad. There were so many shows that I was able to see just by driving to. So the excitement of flying somewhere to see them was um, was just so awesome, you know? Yeah, you know, we had so much fun. And the first night, I have to say, I feel was better than the second night. I mean, we had a couple scuffles getting in. We missed the first yeah. couple songs. And, That's true. And there were some serious highlights the second night. But the first night, I mean, they were just on fire all night. I mean, oh, you know, so good. From, extra and they did uh i mean you know they as we're going to do the music never stopped at donna i mean we've never heard donna play with the uh, band before it, so it was amazing was cool. yeah. yeah it was awesome and we were able we had seats that were kind of far up and there were all these empty seats down low and we were able to upgrade which just put us in such a good mood right being able yeah, to yeah no we just boogied on down and yeah, and the second just, night we just kind of boogied into our seats too right yeah. i mean we just kind of walked in and sat down and 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 then there we were you know i mean only a good show that you just pop right. on in you know you could just maneuver yourself into a into a good spot and it was it was amazing the people around were just you know, I mean, it was it was awesome. It was just such a great show. Well, I am going to play for everyone The Music Never Stops, which has become a recent favorite. I mean, I've always loved the song, but, I mean, there's just that, that upbeat, that fun. And I think just, you know, after 50 years, I mean, there's, you know, the, the songs, you know, the lyrics, they change, they evolve with our lives and with their lives and with the listeners. But, I mean, there is just something special about The Music Never Stops after 50 years, you know, and to have, you know, and I remember listening to it with, um, I was talking to Wendy about the band and them changing and, and different people. And I played from the vault and the music never stops and how, how awesome it was and how, um, Donna played such a strong part in the song from the, from the vault version. And then to hear her mm -hmm. come in and play the melodies, like she did back oh, in the seventies. It was yeah. perfect. So good. So good. No, well, you had mentioned that she had played with some of the, played um at some of the shows over the summer and so um it was just it was such a treat to have her there and to be able to enjoy that so so good yeah no it was it was awesome well everybody enjoy the music never stopped from fenway and then we are going to come back and do a little sign off so um music never stops go get it
has stopped. I mean, it has been such a journey and I, you know, I've enjoyed all of the podcasts. They're all special, but no one's special like you. So this is, this is well, welcome was, to our family. Yeah, no, I enjoyed it. It was, it was really fun kind of doing a walk down the memory lane and thinking about my shows and looking at the set list and getting excited about which ones to pick. So um, yeah, it was really, it was really fun. Well, you know, I mean, we were we were we were touched. I mean, I, I think I'm sure I've mentioned. I know I've mentioned early on in the podcast. I mean, our 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 beginnings in Atherton. I mean, you know, growing up in the same house as Bobby, and people will say like, "Oh, that's so cool. You must have picked up some vibes." And I say, "My sister did too. You know, she's yeah, the one who absolutely. really got me in. You know, I'm like, he yeah. didn't just touch me. I mean, both of us. I mean, we you right. know, we, we both yeah. lived in the house, and yeah, now we. It just it's a it's a very cool connection for sure. 
Yeah, no, soaked up some some serious Bobby vibes with all the the neighbors when they said, "Oh, that Bob Weir." Remember the people in the back yeah. of the yard behind the yeah. They used yeah. to have those yeah. wild parties. They had all those friends. They their music. music. <laughs> yeah. like, so oh, cool. We would have loved to have been there. Well, I don't think I had any idea how cool it was at the time, but now yeah. I think about it. I, I wish I could have interviewed them, you know? Like, I want to know everything about what happened, and, you know, yeah. and the youth is wasted on the young. I had no idea yeah. as a kid how neat it was. But, well, thank you so much for coming on the podcast and, and, and uh, sharing your stories with, with me, which I love talking, and to the listeners who are get, uh, getting Absolutely. a... a Little little family vibe here, and everyone. Thank you so much for listening and enjoying, and uh, and I'll be back in a couple weeks. So, awesome. thank you. <laughs> okay, bye. Welcome back, Chicken Shack. Thank you so much for coming and stopping into the podcast. Oh, hey, Stacey. It's great to be back on. Great to talk to you. Absolutely. So what's what's been going on? Uh, not a lot for the summer. You know, I've been laying low. I was actually hiding out in a rock and roll band for a while. Uh, I was talking to uh, Uncle Sam a couple weeks ago, and, of course, the first thing on his mind is this election coming up. You know, the, the summertime's done coming and gone. And here we are in the fall. Fall tour season's kicking off, but it's also election season. Yeah, there's a lot going on. Well, I'm sure he had a few things to weigh in on. So tell us, like, what's uh, what's what's the feeling? I mean, I feel like there's there's just so much emotion going on out there. And I mean, and and, and you know, the band has always been political without really being too much direction. So what's some of the, you know without specifics? So what's what's the overall view? Well, you know, uh, something we were talking about, we were uh, we were reminded of, of Jerry. Jerry said, uh, constantly choosing the lesser of two evils is still choosing evil. Uh, and it kind of fits with, with this election, this election coming up, uh, with either candidate, you know, it's, which is the lesser of two evils, but what are you going to do? I, I agree. No, I agree. I mean, it's, uh, I think it's just important, you know, I, I, uh, I feel like we, people come to Stranger Stopping Strangers because they want to hear music and they want to talk and they want an escape, but I feel like it's, it's just, it's happening right now. And again, the band with, you know, just the voting and, and I mean, there's, there's so many songs that were about our world and our community and, um, and, and it's just kind of time to, to kind of go back to the basics, right? Right. That's right. I mean, it's all, it's all politicians throwing stones anyway, right? But yeah. at least we have the freedom to, to make a choice and, and that's, you should get out and use that freedom, you know, and get out and vote like the future depends on it because because it does uh, absolutely well they they we just need to the kids they need to dance and shake their bones because the right. politicians are throwing stones this <laughs> year so <laughs> i don't know come november ashes ashes will all fall down it's uh there's a lot going on but uh no it's good to it's it's good to hear from you and uh it's good to get a it's good to know that uh that uncle sam's looking after us because uh i mean he's uh Shook the hand of uh, some some pretty uh, pretty important people out there. He sure has. He has. Well, right on. Well, thank you so much for coming in, and uh, and I'm gonna I'm gonna hear back from you. Check back in. Uh, I don't want to wait till uh, till next July. So we're gonna have a uh, we'll have uh, you come by in the in the winter when you're hanging out dormant and, and say what's going on. Absolutely, it's always a pleasure. Absolutely. Well, thank you, and um, and we'll be in touch. All right, sounds good. Thank you. Okay, bye. Bye bye. Just a shame of me.